Every one of you watching this screen, look out. Anything can happen in the next half hour. What did I tell you about cartoons? They've got a lot of brains, and they've got a lot of kutzpah. Tell me how comic books make you feel, Dave. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me sure. Hi, this is Franz Cantor, um, illustrator, cartoonist, and toon talker, and I'm here with... Jim Bridges, and I'm the president of the Australian Cartoon Museum. Mm -hmm. And why are we looking at a book called The Studio? Well, it this doesn't is... look too cartoony to me. Okay, this came out in the early, early 70s, and uh, it's published by Dragon's Dream. You can still probably buy this on Amazon, or if not, go to your, um, your eBay app. Dragon's Dream. Yep. So Dragon's Dream did a lot of um, uh, illustrated uh, coffee table books, of which this was one. This is probably the best one they've ever done. Jeffrey Jones, Michael Kluder, Barry Windsor Smith, and Bernie Wrightson are the artists involved well, in this. Well, they live together, guns, don't they? They work together and uh, oh, did they? And couched together, couch surfed in this uh, this uh, loft in um, okay. New York City. Okay, that's in the well, Upper East Side. Okay, and so well, here it is. This is this is the loft. These are pictures of all of their different work areas and things, you know, their desks and stuff. So it's quite a um, an interesting um, over the shoulder look at their work and um, how they collaborated. They collaborated a few that's times. That's them. Yeah, this is them. So you can see back there, it's 1970s. So there's been. Bernie's, um, Bernie um, Wrightson. You're going to have to put a... You won't be able to make it out. That's Bernie Wrightson. Yeah. In the... Um, Where's Mike Kaluder? In the coachman's duster. Mike Kaluder is over on the right in the um, the wind jacket, the, yeah. the light jacket. Uh, the, the perennial hippie, Barry Windsor-Smith, and the very cool Jeffrey Jones. So, they're all American, except to, Barry Windsor-Smith. Yeah, he was... He was English, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, so we start off with Jeffrey Jones. Yeah. So Jeffrey Jones, this is like, you know, shots of his um, workspace, right? He was a very accomplished um, illustrator in the vein of um, classic American Well, style, I, yeah, I know his about. stuff is black and white. I thought his best stuff was So black this is and pen white. work. He'd work very closely over the pencil. This yeah. is a beautiful, beautiful pencil. Yeah. By the way, very highly interested in, a lot of them were in Gustav Klimt. And, uh, oh, Eagle your Schiller. hero, your yeah. hero, yeah. So as you can see, there's like a very intricate formal composition yeah. on uh, these and um, I think uh, also Art Nouveau which was the... Well uh, that's his, I remember that. That's Jeffrey's uh, moniker, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, Heroic. Um, very sensitive watercolour work, yeah. you know, uh, pen and ink, uh, oil on canvas. Again, looking at this, it looks very impressionistic, which was his trademark yeah. eventually. I'd say, he, I'd say this that, is the pencil this for that. This looks like some of your paintings. Today. He was obviously a big influence on you. Mm. Beautiful paint work. So some of his uh, uh, more formal compositions. Uh, again in oil. This is oil on panel. Very formal composition. You can actually um, work this out. I think this was done with a grid. This was done like a, um, a golden mean. Studying his work, I, I was very interested in the... Um, the golden rectangle and the Fibonacci spiral. Ah, uh, don't um, get him started on the now, Fibonacci now, spiral. Um, yeah, so I mean, you can look at the way that the eye goes into the yeah, depth yeah. and just basically follows yeah, it up to yeah. the to the action. This is um, this is old-fashioned storytelling in painting. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, and this so is he do three, a lot of sketches in pen. Three and phases of women. 
Yeah, which is again another uh, Klimt uh, yeah. concept. Well, I mean, he, he made it, yeah. Referenced yeah. concept. These are beautiful sketches for, um, this is the duel, this is um, um, uh, Robert E. Howard's um, character. Oh, okay, of the, yeah. Of the um, Pilgrim. Um, yeah, and it, it looks like that, uh, what's that painted American, oh, this is, you see, this uh, is, well, uh, 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 Winslow uh, Homer, was it? No, uh, Wyeth. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Also a bit of Schoenhofer and yeah. there's there's a few other. I called it sort of. I don't know where it came from, but it it um, reminds me of this um, studio technique, an oil painting studio technique pioneered in the uh, early um, 20th century. I think it was called the Brandywine School. Ah yes, <clears throat> now you know it. And yeah. a lot of the artists studied the Dutch masters. Yeah, and. Um, uh, the classical painters, where were these neoclassicists. Or, where were these particular. originally published? That's what I want to know because uh, Edel was published in it, uh, National Lampoon originally. Ah, really? Because yeah. I never, well, I never caught up with it there. I caught it up when, a, in the reprints. It's a reprints. surrealistic. It's a surrealistic. Um, uh, what are they called? Whimsical story, uh, light story. Yeah. About uh, this this perennial pregnant. Um, um, character, yeah. Idol, and her uh, um, meetings with different uh, characters. In this case, is a chimpanzee, but the other, you know, animals and uh, flowers actually, and butterflies would talk to her. Yeah, so I thought it was, it was a, a very, I thought it was a philosophical of, erotic it, strip. That's what I felt of it at the time. Yeah, this is one of his book covers. Yeah, that's lovely, isn't it? Lovely. It, this was the height of his career. He was doing, you know, probably uh, five book covers a week at this stage. Wow. I mean, yeah. This but, I is mean, uh, Judith, which was one of, again, a Klimt yeah, um, yeah. Uh, story painting. But have a look at the brush strokes. Yeah. This is what you call... Um, this. A lot of his work, he experimented, tried to experiment with the actual surface of the, of the materials themselves. Yeah. So it, it creates this sort of uh, dynamic, this um, this um, dialogue between the content and the actual um, subject, the, the actual uh, materials used to describe the subject. Also, they're all influenced by each other because I could see some Barry Smith in some of his work. So when they're in the studio, they're this, obviously this influenced. This is his first wife. They all it's obviously influenced each other. Yeah. As well, there's that. See, that's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Sorrow or ag yeah. agony. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's that's <clears throat> the, the burgers of uh, Calais. You yeah. Know? It's Rodin. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, um, when I studied him, he was an entree into uh, uh, the works of Rodin and uh, Gustav Klimt and and uh, N. C. Okay. Wyeth and all of these uh, illustrators. This is this is very. Um, so telling. that was your his, his that was your introduction uh, to uh, yeah Klimt, was to it? other artists okay, because right. of his I could see where his influences came from so I studied that this is actually um, I believe this is Bernie Wrightson posing for the model for this okay. I could see Bernie Wrightson's iconic um, bone structure <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here folks for the first time yeah Bernie Wrightson's Bone structure. bone structure. God, we structure. go deep, don't we? We yeah. go deep in these things. Yeah. It's just a beautiful formalized uh, yeah, composition. But, yeah. yeah, so um, he had a very um, very tortured uh, uh, life, of course. He, he transitioned uh, late in life to a woman. He became Catherine Jones. Did he? Mm. Oh, okay. So, well, he obviously wanted to get pregnant. So, uh, Blind Narcissus, I had a beautiful big poster of this, yeah. um, actually, this is quite, um, he loved these trees which were in New York, in Upper New York, these, um, I, I don't know what they're called, white ash, I think, and this is, this is Jeffrey Jones uh, channeling um, another uh, uh, Art Nouveau painter, an English painter, um, who I can't remember at the moment, but... Uh, he used to do, there's a couple of his paintings in Australian galleries. Uh, Waterhouse. Okay. Yeah. So, and we go on to the uh, very interesting Michael, Michael Kaluta. Yeah. Um, I know him from the, the Shadow comics. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, he did. This was. This a, is Arthur a, Ransom, sort of. Isn't Arthur it? Rackham, yeah. Rackham, yeah. <clears throat> so this is um, like Kaluta yeah. trying to channel an Arthur Rackham. Yeah. But this is an oil paint, so he's very accomplished. This is a duotone or a monotone, monochromatic oil painting, um, and you can see you can't see many. It's quite thin, so he yeah. painted a very dynamic. Uh, composition. There's a lot of reflection on that. Yeah, so you there can is. Tilt it slightly. Okay. There's a very dynamic composition. Michael Kaluta was a very interesting man. He was uh, extremely um, articulate with his drawings and his compositions. Um, so you know, he he actually did a. There was we can't show it here, but he illustrated Metropolis. Um, which were brilliant, and uh, of course the star. What he illustrated the whole film. He, he illustrated no, no. He illustrated a book on Metropolis. Oh, okay, which kind okay, of, okay. Yeah, it was very, very iconic. That was in yeah. the, in the early nineties. These are some of his. <laughs> you could tell. Look at this. Looks like a stained glass window. Yeah. This is how interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, Anuvo was to him, and you know. And the Beatles, which is... And the Beatles. Is, she's leaving home, this painting's called. Oh. So, I mean, if you ever wanted to, to put a picture to the, to the lyrics of the Beatles song, She's Leaving Home, uh, you can really she, go past she this. She looks like she lives in an interesting home. Yeah. I wouldn't be leaving it. <laughs> in yeah. a hurry. So, you know, a lot of Art Nouveau and before that were very interested in theatre. Yeah. Musical, the not musical theatre, but opera. Yeah. And uh, also Orientalism, well, Mucha. which is Mucha? A, Mucha? Mucha? yeah, Alphonse Mucha, yeah. and uh, very inf influenced. Yeah, he actually was very influenced by Alphonse Mucha. Yeah. He was a well, um, he was the major artist in the in the Art Nouveau. Yeah. yeah, and there's a nice close up. Yeah, look at the balance in that. Mm. Wow, yeah. very uh, elegant and organic. And he's obviously done kids' books too. This is very Alice in Wonderland, Come Nemo influence. Again, Nemo, Nemo and Bedland, beautiful stuff. I had this poster. Yes. Yeah, the century, yeah. That's lovely. But everything, uh, all of the action, all of the dynamics are, are uh, well. Using bees, decorative. using bees as and characters. Using wasps. Yeah, wasps as characters in, yeah. a, in a painting is pretty extraordinary, really. Yeah, so this is a watercolor yeah. in the vein of, um, oh, you know, Arthur Rackham. And, and a lot of the this is, uh, 19, 1900s um, water babies. illustrations. This is your sort of water, water babies tradition. Yeah. And here's the shadows. And see, I love this black and white work. Yeah. And his sturdy style drawings with the fashions and stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? Pirate y stuff. Yeah. Well, that was 1975. I don't know where he, he, yeah. he did this, but this is very reminiscent of illustrations in the 1920s. Yeah. So he loved the, the, the old days, the research that he put into it. I mean, look at the marketplace here. Yeah, I mean, Afghani the amount, Fandango the background detail drawings. in all oh, these God, pictures is this. extraordinary. Yeah. If you guys, can we zoom yeah. in on this? <clears throat> you can pan through. You can look at the details that he put in this. He really loves this. Um, this era of Orientalism, and um, well, yeah, it was big in the in the thirties, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, tales of the Arabian Nights yeah. and things like that. Well, this is more book illustration. These are know? book illustrations, yeah. 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 There's a Conan. Yes. There's another Conan. Yeah. A pink this Conan. Various iterations of it. I don't know. Yeah, and he went on to do... Um, so the studio was really a place for these artists, these poor people, these yeah. great people, movers and shakers of I, their time. I can see how they really influenced each other. I really yeah. can. I mean, Barry Smith sort of... I mean, straight away you see the pre-Raphaelites. Yeah. In, well, he, in, he, in the he, look, you know? Yes, he loved the pre-Raphaelites. Yeah, obviously. But, yeah. I mean, the Americans are coming from a different sort of tradition, mm. their own tradition. See, that's it. That's it. That's Conan. Yeah, so he did a he did a Conan, and his Conan was totally different to the Robert E. Howard Conan, oh, or yeah. the Pozzetta Conan, oh, yeah. or the Basima Conan, or anything else. Yeah. His Conan 
was in uh, Marvel Comics and it was extremely elegant. Oh, very, very beautifully. Very like, I think he was influenced by Kirby and Starenko at the time. Yeah, so these are limited edition prints. Yeah. I think they're, they were um, bookmarks as yes, well. Yes, yes. Sometimes, both all four of these people put out portfolios, limited edition portfolios, yeah. um, which I have to spend all my pocket money on. Have you got any of them? I have. Oh, we should have a look at a, a close. To, we should a, analyze something in great detail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's the orientate oriental thing that in, mm, but it's also orientalism. It's also got lots of other stuff. There's, you know, there's. Mm. Arturian, all sorts of things. Oh, he this. loved doing and grass. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Look at the patterns in that in that cloak. Yeah. But he loved doing grass. He did it so. He well. did grass. Yeah. <laughs> he did grass work. Right? Yeah. Well, he did grass as well. I mean, look at that. There's yeah. Bran MacMorn, which is Robin Howard picked character, pictish character. One of my mm. favourite stories. And uh, look at the more than half of the picture is the grass. It's yeah. Gorgeous. So that was a... Um, You'd be a hard man to animate. Yeah. There's a beautiful Conan profile. So he, he's very much um, into the pre-Raphaelite movement of England, which is kind of very interesting in and of itself. There's Solomon Cain, of course. Yeah, and look at this. Beautiful. Yeah, that was a, I had a poster of this as well. And, and have this a look at the the, 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 the line on the body. Mm, the have shadow? Have a look at all the, the way, Cross way he's... hatching Yeah, look, look at his... Here yeah. he's got this longish and then the short sort of... Yeah. And look very at the beautiful un... short strokes. And, yeah, on the, beautiful. On the deer's face. Beautiful. Not afraid of decorate of decoration. And this guy worked in comics. Oh, detail and decoration. He, he couldn't have lasted. Look at the border, all done by yeah. him. He couldn't have lasted long in comics because comics was just a churn out sort of theme. You know, I yeah, mean, he no, just I, churned them out. And I he, believe that he was too. He wasn't commercial enough. No, but I love. I mean, you know, he's. They're my favourite Conan comics. Mm. Sarah Bernhardt. Yeah. Oh, and this one, yeah. Pandora. Yeah. Opening the box. Mm. These were used as posters, so they had mm. a lot of little references. Yes. This is, what do they call those um, curios? Those shelves with little tiny items in them that tell stories. Um, little shadow boxes. Yeah, something. yeah, shadow boxes, yeah. There's yeah. that famous American artist who specialised in making them. Yeah, I forget his name. This was Sith. a famous poster. Well. Yeah, very. See, these are posters of Look the how time. It started out this incredibly dynamic. To me, these are the seventies. Yeah, these are the seventies. Yeah. They're, they're iconic. Yep. But you know, they, they weren't. And see this, I remember this really yeah. well. That picture. God, look at the work in that. Yeah. <laughs> look at the work in that. Some great stuff. So all the stuff's coming out in America, but it had an international market because, I mean, these guys were um, selling the stuff all over the world, weren't they? Yeah. Well, Dragon's Dream uh, was a big publisher. They picked, they published these uh, beautiful art books, and um, they uh, did a lot of album cover books. Um, views by um, Roger Dean, of course. Of course. Mm. Who's Roger Dean? Of course. Another illustrator. Look at this. Yeah. Now we get into Bernie Wrightson, who ah. of course died uh, quite recently. Swamp Thing. Swampy. Mm. Now he, he, um, he's been seminal, this guy. He's quite uh, interesting for uh, um, both horror and uh, horror illustration yeah. because up until he started to draw these skeletal zombie characters you know nobody really could match him um, you couldn't get this, this sort well, of the, feeling well the Filipino the school um, Filipino school well, Alex Nino yeah that's yeah. sort of um, I thought he was influenced by that at the time no but obviously, he was influenced by EC horror yes yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, well, look at that. Look further. at that. Yeah, oh, yeah. He yeah. took it a few notches further, I'd say. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, this is the telltale heart. Yeah. So he started to explore the, the these 
illustrative compositions. I think of the Telltale Heart of Edgar Allan Poe. Beautiful. Um, and of course, uh, went on, although it's not in this book, I don't believe it, uh, it came on later, which was Frankenstein. And he's sort of the the artist, Is that the room morgue? illustrator yeah, room morgue. For, uh, for Frank. Oh my God, there it is. It came out before it. What? This is Frankenstein, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I didn't yeah. realize, I haven't read this book for a long time. But there, you know, incredible pen work. Yeah. And, you know, so beautifully done to tell the story visually so he's, of Frankenstein. he's using old-fashioned pens. Yeah, pen and ink. He's not, there's no right wing about him, is there? No, no, these were very fluid and yeah. the cross-hatching and... Uh, uh, well, the, American, the Americans had a great tradition of well, that. Well, not stippling, but uh, yes, it, long, long pen strokes. Yeah, the Americans did. There yeah. were a lot of uh, illustrators who did like um, etching yes. styles. See, he's, he's captured the old European you know, style. Yeah, and, yeah, He loved this medium. And look and at this all, was like, like look at like all the work in this and the. the well, this the was black. a work of love. Oh yeah, absolute love. And when you when you read. Frankenstein, illustrated by Bernie Wrightson. It's quite an experience. And there's this fantasy bit. Look. Yes. Yeah. This... And his colouring's lighter than the other guys, isn't it? It's... His watercolours, yeah. Yeah. He did a bit of watercolour for uh, com, uh, com, um, what do you call it? purple pictography in the early 70s was with, with uh, Vaughan Bode. Yeah, that looks Bodish. Yeah. Mm. It's a sleeping dragon. Look at the. It's beautiful. The brushwork and the and uh, look at the dragons. The I, I love the, the cross. I love the cross. That shows the relaxation, the relaxation, and the sleepiness. But the, the caricature of the teeth and, and the, the eyes open still. Mm. Oh, these are the processes for if yeah. This is different processes of shh, which was a poster for. So he spent time. a lot of time on these. Mm. Oh. I think that his black and white stuff is the powerful, most powerful. Did, what about Hellboy? Did Hellboy be influenced by um, Bernie? Uh, in tone, probably, yeah, because he used to do use a lot of black um, shadows for a lot of the uh, horrific uh, scenes. Yeah. This again, we were talking about Rackham before. Yeah. This is a, this is one of his best. Watercolors, in my opinion, this, this one is incredibly uh, powerful. And what's so? What's so? Show me. Well, what, there's so what much atmosphere it? and depth. Oh yeah, yeah. It just sort of radiates. Yeah. Um, light in a m magical frazetterish sort of way. You know, the light sort of filtering from through the clouds. So where does Frisetta come with these guys? Like this. Frisetta is. A, Earlier than than these yeah, guys. I know that influence, but but, but he he wasn't the... he influenced these guys, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, it's a lovely, okay, bloody yeah, Conan picture to finish on. Cool. Okay, well that's that's it. That's all it. right. That's well, uh, Dragon Dreams, the studio. It's worth getting hold of. I mean, um, because I mean, all these things they're shown, they're all they'd be worth a bit of money now. All those yeah. um, prints and stuff. Absolutely. Okay, well, thanks for that. Thanks right, for your uh, insight. Yeah. This is okay. Franz Cantor and... Um, this is uh, Jim Catch Us on Patreon Bridges. Yeah, don't saying, forget Patreon. Saying see you next time. Sayonara. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for the sour persimmons, cousin.